Well, good morning, everybody. You're all very downbeat this morning. I thought this was going to be a big, proud moment. I mean, it's taken you eight and a half years of bullying, of lying, of ignoring democratic referendums. Eight and a half years it's taken you to get this treaty through, and on the 1st of December, you will have it. And, of course, the architect of all of this, Giscard, wanted from this constitutional treaty for the European Union to have a big global voice. But I'm afraid the leaders have suffered from a collective loss of nerve. They've decided that they want their faces to be up on the global stage, not somebody from the European Union, and so we've got appointed a couple of political pygmies. The Kissinger question of who to call in Europe hasn't really been answered, has it? I guess the answer can only be Mr Barroso, because he's the only one that anybody in the world has ever heard of and is probably the big winner out of these posts. No wonder, sir, you look so happy this morning. <laughs> and we have a new President of Europe, Herman Van Rompuy. Doesn't exactly trip off the tongue, does it? Um, I can't see him stopping the traffic in Beijing or Washington. I doubt anybody in Brussels would even recognise who he is. And yet, he's going to be paid a salary that is bigger than Obama's, which tells you all you need to know about this European political class and how they look after themselves. But at least he's an elected politician, unlike Baroness Cathy Ashton who really is the true representation of the modern-day political class. In some ways, she's ideal, isn't she? She's never had a proper job, and she's never been elected to anything in her life. So I guess she's perfect for this European Union. Excuse me, Mr Farage. Yes. I would like to put down your, your, your postages. You, you made your, your presentation. Right, okay. is yes, enough for us. Down, chaps. Okay, down, chaps. please continue. Can't know. But, I mean, she's never been elected to anything, and no one knows who she is. Even the Prime Minister was talking about Baroness Ashdown as opposed to Ashton. I mean, no one has ever heard of her. She's even less well-known than Herman Van Rompuy. I mean, that takes some doing, doesn't it? She's risen without trace. She's part of this post-democratic age. She married well. She married an advisor and a friend and supporter of Tony Blair and got put in the House of Lords. When she was in the House of Lords, she was given one big job, and the job was to get the Lisbon Treaty through the House of Lords and to do so pretending, pretending that it was entirely different to the EU Constitution. So she's good at keeping a straight face, and she vigorously crushed any attempt in the House of Lords for the British people to have a referendum. So here she is, never stood for public office, never had a proper job, and here she gets one of the top jobs in the Union. Her appointment is an embarrassment for Britain. But it's much worse. Well, at least I've been elected, sir. Unlike her, she's not been elected, and the people don't have the power to remove her. But just hear the next bit. There's something rather more serious than that. Cathy Ashton was an active member of the campaign for nuclear disarmament. In fact, she was the treasurer of the campaign for nuclear disarmament during a period of time when CND took very large donations and refused to reveal the source. What is known is that these donations were obtained by a man called Will Howard, who was a member of the Communist Party in Great Britain. Will Baroness Ashton deny that while she was treasurer, that she took funds from organisations who were opposed to Western-style capitalism and democracy. That question must be asked. And are we really happy that somebody who will be in charge of our overseas security policy was an activist a few years ago in an outfit like CND? I mean, if we really think that, frankly, we need our bumps felt. I don't think that she's a fit and proper person to do this job. She has no experience, and unless she can answer those questions, did she take money from enemies of the West? That question must be answered. Well, we have our two pygmies. We'll have the bland leading the bland, but I'm not celebrating because they'll press on with political union, and whilst our leaders may have saved face for the moment for themselves on the international stage, they have all betrayed their national democracies. The European state is here. We're about to get an avalanche of new laws because of this Lisbon Treaty, and there's no question in my mind 
that there has to be a full, free, fair referendum in the United Kingdom to decide whether we stay part of this union or not. I hope and pray that we vote to leave, but either way, the people simply must be asked. Thank you. Well, um, uh, chciałem, chciałem, I would like to turn to uh, Mr. Farage. It would be most uh, appropriate if you turned your uh, tone down because certain expressions uh, are not acceptable to everybody. I would like to ask you whether you would like to accept a question uh, uh, from uh, some of the members as the blue card question. Uh, Madam I'm just, I'm just uh, curious, Herzog, I'm just curious what is the yeah. well, uh, well, maybe, maybe well, is, well, uh, Madam Herzog, please. Mr. President, uh, Mr. Farage has said that those people they were elected last week are not those the traffic will stop to let them go. And this is why we elected them, because we wanted to elect people who will make the traffic move for all European citizens to get a better life to themselves. And this is what they will do. Mr. Rompuy and Mr. Cathy Ashton are four people, and the 480 million people European will know it soon. I think this is the stake, and we have to stand for them. We have to save, stay, save their integrity, personal integrity. And Mr. Farage, I'd like to say something, Hungarian quotation for you. It's good that you are here, because if the monkey goes up to the tree, it's better seen how red is his popo. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, with respect, I think you've completely missed the point, because twice you said the people that were elected last week. They have not been elected. That is the point that I'm making, and in the case of Baroness Ashton, she has never been elected to public office in her entire life. She takes an enormously powerful job, and the peoples of Europe, of Britain, of everywhere else, do not have the power to hold her to account and to remove her, and that fundamentally is what is wrong with this whole European Union. It's all about bureaucracy versus democracy. Things have gone horribly, horribly horribly wrong. But Mr. President, can I please come back and ask you the question? You seem to imply that I'd said something that was inappropriate or over the top or wrong. Could you please explain what that was? I want to know. Um, uh, some uh, uh, way of explanation of the way of uh, selection of the so important people for the European Union and uh, uh, what you say about the whole issue which is connected with that. It is just, by my opinion, uh, absolutely improper to the whole situation. Well, it is my opinion, colleague, okay, fine. When you were, when you were elected, yeah. as, uh, when you were elected as president, you said you would act as a neutral president to ensure that all sides of the debate were given their chance to have a say. If you're criticising me on the political content of what I say, then you're not doing your job as a neutral chairman. Well, uh, okay. Thank you, colleague Farage. Uh, now we go to... Uh, uh, Who elected these guys to run the planet?